So, thank you for attending my session on digital serenity and why open infrastructure matters. My name is Edward Idrich. I'm working for the Sovereign CloudSec project as a community manager. The SDS project is a funded project by the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action Germany and is hosted by the Open Source Business Alliance, an association for the open source industry in Germany and beyond. SDS is a project of providers joining forces to implement, define, and consolidate an open source based stack for cloud and container um, technology, putting users and providers back in control. But I'm not here to present our Sovereign CloudSec project, I'm here because we need to talk. We need to talk about a term and a notion that is highly overused, highly redefined, and we need to be clear as a community of the Open Infra Foundation what we mean by digital serenity. Because if you follow recent media and news coverage on cloud technology, you may have heard of digital serenity, but the offerings are highly different. Uh, they range from OpenStack-based classes up to um, local spin-offs of GCP, Azure in the corresponding jurisdiction. And we need to be clear what we mean with digital serenity. Because is this digital serenity if we provide local spin-offs of proprietary cloud stacks in the corresponding jurisdiction? Or do we have the same vendor logins we have as if they were uh, enabled and operated in other countries? So, before we talk about digital serenity, let's step back and talk about serenity in a general sense. There exists perhaps no conception, the meaning of which is more controversial than that of serenity. And this was said 210 years earlier, and I think this is still true, and this can build the, uh, still be applied to the digital serenity debate running now. So, if we try to find a common definition, we may be able to comply on the term supreme authority within a territory. And this notion of territory does not need to be restricted to the pure landmass, but also to the resources lying on that territory. May it be human infrastructures or others. In the eye of the current situation in, uh, in the war on Ukraine, you may have heard of the current debates around food serenity or energy serenity, meaning that the means of production uh, are under control of the corresponding countries and they are able to provide either food or energy to the people in the country and beyond. But what is meant by digital serenity? Who is in the control of the running cloud of the services on that hardware located somewhere? And this is the point where the different offerings divide and all mean different, me different meanings arise from the term digital serenity. We at the Sovereign Cloud Stack project have developed a four layer um, scheme where we try to define di digital serenity as more than uh, mere legal compliance because we need much more than just legal compliance. We need open infrastructure, we need open source communities, we need competence, and I want to present you what we define by digital serenity. So on the bottom layer we have this legal dimension. Services are running in the current, uh, in the corresponding jurisdiction and the state has the authority to control these services in the way um, they define it. But there is much more we need for, for self-determination in the digital, digital realm. For example, we need this freedom of choice. As a user, I want to be able to choose between different offerings. I don't want to be tied to one single vendor solution, and I want to be freely able to migrate my workloads from vendor A to vendor B, or between different solutions. We need regarding the technological dimension, we need open technology. This means we need open source technology baked up by an open community, baked up by the four opens of the Open Infra Foundation. And we need more, we need competence, because this whole stack somehow needs to be operated securely and um, confidentially. So if we step back and look at the bottom layer, we may uh, arise the question, 
even if data is processed and stored solely in Europe, isn't there still a strong dependency on one single software vendor comparable to Azure, GCP, you name it. So to solve this, let's add more alternatives. You can choose, uh, as I said, between vendors, between solutions. But this is not the end of our journey to digital sovereignty because even if I can choose between different offerings, how can I influence the future evolution of the software? How can I make an impact so that the software I am using is evolving in the, uh, in the right direction? I am able to use it also in the future. And if we want to have this power of influence, we could just use open source software. But is this the end of our journey? Is using open source software defining and um, underlying uh, digital sovereignty? No, because we need more than just open source software. And this is where the Open Infra Foundation made a big step ahead by defining the four opens. Because even if I can inspect, use, modify and share the software, how can I contribute to design decisions or upstream code? How can I get involved into the community and shape this product as I need it as a user? And this is where the Fantastic Four come into play. We need open communities, open de uh, design, open development and open source defined by the Open Infra Foundation. And these are, this is the foundation to be digital serenity in the sense of I can influence and shape the product I am using and have an impact on future uh, design decisions. But are we done yet? Am I fully sovereign? I'm fully self-determined on running software? No, because even if I can participate in the community developing the software, how the heck am I supposed to run this whole stack at scale? And this is not trivial because open source vendors lend to the, tend to um, keep the, the whole operating knowledge secret. And this is something we try to overcome. Because for true self-determination in the ever-growing digital realm, we urgently need to build skills and share this knowledge freely and in unlimited ways, exactly as we have done it with open source software 40, 40 years ago. And we try and must now build up this operational knowledge to be uh, shared freely in the community so that we can build growing communities that operate stuff well, secure, and uh, at scale. If you're curious what we mean by open operations um, in re respect to open source software, I invite you to, in, uh, um, to the session of Kurt and Phoenix today at um, 3.20 p.m. where we try to um, begin the discussions around open operations and to gather a community around this concept of sharing knowledge freely and building this knowledge community around operational tasks. So join them and Get in touch with us to build this fifth uh, open, in the open operations. So if we look back at our four layers, legal dimension, freedom of choice, technological dimension, and the dimension of competence to run this whole stack, we can truly define digital serenity as the top of these four layers. So if I want to be self-determined and be freely uh, in my choices what to run, where to run, and how to contribute into the future, we need to build freedom of choice, technology dimension, and the competence on the bottom of legal uh, aspects. If you want to read more on our perception of digital serenity and that um, this is just more than um, just legal compliance as Azure or GCP try to redefine this term, then feel free to get a copy of our white paper that has been printed in the cloud report. We have a German and an English uh, version. You can get a free copy at uh, the booth of B1 Systems that is located at booth A3 uh, on the upper layer. And join us in the discussions around digital serenity or read on on our blog on scs.community where we try to shift the whole discussion that has been uh, captured by the hyperscalers into the right direction by defining more than legal compliance by trying to embrace open communities, open technology, and open operational knowledge. So let's come back 
is this digital sovereignty, we must say no. And we must make an impact on this discussion and try to redefine it and demystify digital sovereignty and embrace these open technology hosted by an open community with open operational knowledge. So join this discussion, stop hyperscalers bullshitting around with the term digital sovereignty and let us redefine this term into the right direction because it mu needs much more than just running proprietary software in, co in the corresponding jurisdiction. We need these opens to run software and technology self-determined for a better future and um, yeah, join us and let us shape this discussion into the right direction. Thank you for attending this session. Hope to have inspired you and connect with the people running and um, fighting for digital sanity. Thank you. We have some minutes left. Um, if you have questions, if you want to contribute to this discussion, feel free to grab the microphone and uh, contribute to the discussion. So if this is not the case, thank you for attending the session. Hope to see you soon and let's demystify this whole notion. Thank you. <laughs>